Hello everyone, I am Risha and this is For the Love of Classics. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a reading wrap up. This video will just have mini reviews of these books and what I thought about them. So the first book which I'm going to talk about is The Plague by Albert Camus. This is my new favorite book of all time. I loved it so much, it was absolutely brilliant. This book was originally written in French by an Algerian French writer, Camus, in the year 1947, so it is a modern classic. I have been meaning to read this book for five months now when the pandemic started, but unfortunately due to some delays, my shipment never reached me. So in this book, the story is narrated by an unknown narrator. The story is set in an Algerian town in North Africa called Oran. As the name of the book suggests, the story is about an epidemic of plague which breaks out in the city of Oran. And the book is divided into five parts. In the first part of the book, the epidemic of plague breaks out. And by the end of the first part, the disease is officially called the plague. In the second book, the city undergoes quarantine. In the third book, the disease plague is at its peak in this town. It's one of the worst crises the town has ever faced. By the end of the fourth book, we see decline in the number of cases of plague reported and there are also some recoveries. And by the fifth book, the epidemic of plague finally disappears and the city of Oran is no longer in quarantine. This is an existential novel and there have been comparisons between this book and The Trial by Kafka. I have read The Trial by Kafka and I can see the similarities between these two books because in both these books there is an atmosphere of helplessness. The best thing about this book was that how people come together in such a time. The mutual connections which characters form during this period of an epidemic was so beautifully described and was very similar similar to the situation we are all going through. I can understand that this book can be a trigger for some people so if you want to skip to the review of the next book you can do that. There is going to be a link in the description which you can check. If I had read this book in the first month of the pandemic it would have been triggering for me as well but I feel like now that things have smoothed out a bit and now that we are able to understand the situation a bit better this book was very eye-opening because it looked at a very similar situation from a philosophical point of view. How the people in the town behaved, how how the authorities in the town undertook this challenge, how it was all very chaotic, how it was disturbing for many people in the town, how different people reacted to the same situation. Many people in the book turned to religion during this difficult time. Albert Camus has loosely based this on the cholera epidemic which hit Oran in 1849 but it is said that the town of Oran had previously undergone bubonic plague as well so that could have been his inspiration for the book as well so the main character of the book is dr bernard that character might be one of the reasons i love this book so much he's the person who sees the first case of the plague and reports it to the authorities he is the one who asks the authorities to take it seriously and to declare it as an epidemic we see him throughout the book, he is overworked, he is doing whatever he can to stay strong during this terrible time. Before the town went into quarantine, his wife had to leave the town and throughout the book he stays separated from her. But he's a very practical man. He sees the people who don't believe in the disease, he sees the ones who are really scared, but he keeps a practical view of the whole situation. The second character we see in the book is Jean, who is a lawyer or an activist. Halfway through the book, he decides to be a volunteer. He is doing that because he is a moralist. He wants to do the right thing. Another character in the book was Joseph, who is a 50-year-old clerk. His subtle courage and volunteer work throughout this period of epidemic was underappreciated, but he remained brave and constant with his efforts. Another character which stood out was the character of Raymond. He comes to the town of Oran. He is a journalist, but he gets stuck here when a quarantine hits. And throughout this epidemic, he is trying to escape the town. He misses his wife and he fears that she will forget him because this epidemic is taking forever. But his desperation to leave the town was something which I think many of us have seen around us during this pandemic as well. This is a subtle piece of genius. I highlighted so many passages in this book and I have used so many tabs for my favorite parts. I'm going to share some of my favorite parts at the end of this video so stay tuned. 
I forgot to tell you that I have given The Plague a 5 star rating. This book is now in my favorites shelf on Goodreads. So the next book which I recently read and want to talk about is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This book was published in the year 1814 and it is the third novel by Jane Austen which was published. It's the last book by Jane Austen which I read. I have now read all of her six main novels. I wasn't sure whether I would love this book or whether I'll hate it because there are so many mixed reviews about Mansfield Park online. I did not love the television adaptations of Mansfield Park which I saw ages ago but I really wanted to read it because it was a Jane Austen novel. There are some people online who absolutely love it and then there are others who absolutely hate the book. I'm glad to report that I fall in the first category. I loved Mansfield Park. I have given Mansfield Park 4.5 stars. I originally wanted to give it 4 stars but one week after I finished reading the book I went for a 4.5 star. So the protagonist of the story is Fanny Price. She comes from a big family and when she was 10 years old she goes to live with her aunt and uncle. Her uncle and aunt Mr. and Mrs. Bertram live in Mansfield Park. Fanny Price is the odd one out there. She is timid and she is scared. She is surrounded by her rich and bougie cousins. At the beginning of the novel, Fanny is often described as being frail and ill and everybody's taking care of her because she has poor health. Uh, well, not everyone, just one of her cousins, Edmund. Except for Edmund, none of her cousins form any attachment with Fanny Price. They always consider her to be their poor cousin who has come to live with them. I understand why some people hate Mansfield Park because they don't like Fanny Price. One of the reasons for that might be because she is the good uh, girl in this book, meaning she is God-fearing and doesn't want to do anything which will, you know, anger her uncle and aunt or which will be considered wrong by the society. Because she is an outsider in this house, she's always doing the right thing because she does not want to get into any trouble. At the beginning of the novel, these cousins decide to have a private theatre production in their house. This is the point in the novel where all these young people have temptations thrown their way. We see that Fanny stays strong and uses her common sense throughout the situation. She stands by what she thinks is right and what she thinks is wrong. There's a second point in the book where she makes a very brave decision and that is when she takes a strong decision against her uncle and aunt's wishes regarding a proposal. Because of that decision, she is told to go back to Portsmouth to her parents house so that she gets a taste of how poor her family actually is to bring her to her senses this is the plan that her uncle and aunt come up with when she goes to her parents house she sees the problems there she tries to find their qualities and tries to do what is best for them this is the part where i actually sympathized with the character of fanny price the most she realizes how different circumstances could have been for her and how lucky she was um, that she got an upbringing very different from her siblings but she decides to do whatever she can to help her siblings as well. I used an audiobook for the second half of this book and I came back to the book for the illustrations. So I didn't think I would love this book but I really did. I did not really like the character of Edmund a lot. He totally friend zoned Fanny in this book and I don't understand why he did that and the ending of the book was a bit too quick. Austin just gave us a perfect ending with the bow on top in the last chapter. I was hoping there would be more of it so I think that might be the reason why I'm not able to give this a complete five stars. And the third and the last book which I'm going to review is Marriage by Susan Ferrier. I know many people have decided to pick this book up because they saw me enjoying this book so much in my vlogs. Marriage was published in the year 1818 by a Scottish female writer, Susan Ferrier. She was a contemporary of Jane Austen and she was aware of Jane Austen at the time. Her book was an immediate success. They had to reprint this book at the time but then it was lost for ages and recently it got published by Virago Modern Classics. Susan Ferrier wrote this 
this book anonymously. The reason for that is because she used some recognizable characters or people from the time. It wasn't considered proper for women to write books at the time as well. I know many people go into this book thinking it is by a contemporary of Jane Austen and then come out of it disappointed and I think comparing Ferrier to Austen is not the best thing uh, for Ferrier. Her writing style is very different from Austen and I think there is no point in comparing those two. Uh, she used Scottish language in this book as well and those parts can be a bit difficult to read. The way the book was written was a bit jumpy. She was trying to tell so many things in this one book that it felt a bit disorganized and haphazard. So this book is divided into two parts. In the first part, we see the character of Lady Juliana. Lady Juliana is well off and lives in England and she falls in love with a poor Scottish soldier. She elopes with him because her father does not think she should marry him and when she elopes with him he takes her to scotland to the highlands as they are called when lady juliana sees the place where she is now supposed to live she regrets getting married we see this very superficial lady who doesn't care about how and where the money is coming from as long as she is comfortable the whole first book is describing the story of lady juliana she has two daughters they are twins she cares about her dogs which she takes with her everywhere she goes she wanted to go back to england on the very first day she got to scotland she does everything she can to escape her life in scotland in book two the story continues but 16 years later now her two daughters are all grown up one of them was brought up by lady juliana in england and the second daughter was brought up in scotland by lady juliana's sister-in-law so they both had a very different upbringing and they both have very different personalities and we see them come together in book two. The character we see the most of is Mary who is the daughter which was brought up in Scotland. She's a God-fearing good girl. She's kind of similar to Fanny Price in a sense that you know she is kept away from her family, only wants to do the right thing. Her sister Adelaide is opposite to Mary. She is kind of similar to her mother, maybe a bit more smarter than her mother, but she is also a very superficial Wayne girl, a typical uh, lady who wants to get married for money and not for love. So the second book was more interesting in a way that we see the contrast between these two sisters. There's an excellent character in the second book, Lady Emily. She's a very outspoken girl, but she sees through her two cousins. She realizes how superficial and vain Adelaide is and how good-natured Mary is. That was a fun character and there are so many other small characters in this book which were so funny and comedic. So I think the reason why Ferrier chose to write about a God-fearing character like Mary is because uh, this is what she believed in. She thought that women should behave in a proper way um, and as well McDermott says in the introduction that she hated to be thought improper and she understood what happened to women like that. I think it's a good book in its own right. I think you should read this book not because it was written by Jane Austen's contemporary but because you want to get a more idea of the time, how things were because her canvas is more broader. She talks about the domestic life and different types of people in England and Scotland at the time. So those were the three books which I read in the last month or two and i really enjoyed all three of them one of them is now my all-time favorite the plague i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down in the comments have you read any of these books how did you find them or if you are planning to read any of these three books let me know down as well i'm going to see you all in my next video very very soon inshallah bye The perplexity of the early days gradually gave place to panic. Our townsfolk realized that they had never dreamed it possible that our little town should be chosen out for the scene of such grotesque happenings. And it was then that fear and with fear serious reflection began. I asked what sort of trouble we might expect. That he couldn't say. Disasters always come out of the blue. When a war breaks out, people say it's too stupid, it can't last long. But though a war may well be too stupid, that doesn't prevent its lasting. Stupidity has a knack of getting its way, 
as we should see if we were not always so much wrapped up in ourselves. He's telling about people who don't believe in plague. They went on doing business, arranged for journeys and formed views. How should they have given a thought to anything like plague, which rules out any future, cancels journeys, silences the exchange of views? They fancied themselves free and no one will ever be free so long as there are pestilences. This drastic clean-cut deprivation and our complete ignorance of what the future held in store had taken us unawares. We were unable to react against the mute appeal of presences. On the whole, men are more good than bad. That, however, isn't the real point. But they are more or less ignorant, and it is this that we call vice or virtue. Guys, read this book. It's absolutely brilliant. And this author got a Nobel Prize for a reason. This was such an awesome book. Every sentence, every paragraph was full of wisdom. Just, just read it, okay? Read it whenever you can. I highly, highly recommend it. Was so... Was not... Was so... Um, so I think this would be a wrap up for, so I think this is, so I hope this, so I hope you guys, um, so.